the following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. Sir Walter Jones Show with co-host Alvin Carter. We are a Christian talk show in which we tackle all the hot topics in the Believer's Walk. It's Fireside Friday. Grab a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and be encouraged in the Lord. Friday. 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 Today's audience was separated into two groups. Not on the color of their skin were they separated when they arrived. They were separated based on the color of their eyes. But they have no idea that they were separated. What we did was treat each group differently, discriminating against the people who have blue eyes, catering to those people with brown eyes. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Look we'll your eyes. Blue. Over there, put it on. No, 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 over there. Blue, over there. The blue-eyed people were pulled out of line, told to put on a green collar and wait outside. When the brown-eyed people arrived, they were told to step to the front of the line. Our staff was instructed to be extra polite to brown-eyed people and to discriminate against blue-eyed people like this one. I understand that, but actually my license got stolen. And when I went to replace oh, I'm it, sorry, that's not our problem. We well, always have to have our you go. Audience members with brown eyes were allowed to enjoy coffee and donuts. Those with blue eyes were left standing in a crowded room without refreshments for over two hours. The blue eyed group became upset when they saw the brown eyed people were being seated first. You look at those people with you. What are they doing in there? You're trying to get so I just want to warn all of you who are watching you know more than they know in the audience. Diversity expert Jane Elliott helped set up the experiment. She played along telling our segregated audience that brown-eyed people were smarter than blue-eyed people. I've been a teacher for 25 years in the public, private, and parochial schools in this country, and I have seen what brown-eyed people have done as compared to what blue-eyed people do. And it's perfectly obvious. And if I didn't believe it before this morning, you should have been here this morning when we brought these people in here. Feeling discriminated against, the blue-eyed audience members were visibly upset. She was rude to us, all of us. Yelled at us, called us names, pushed us aside. She was rude. This lady came out in the line with all of us people that had light-colored eyes and said, you put this green collar on now and keep it on, and if you don't, hit the road. I want to say, why doesn't Jane have a green collar on? She She's got blue eyes. Because I've learned to act brown-eyed. I have a brown-eyed husband and three brown-eyed children. Why did you... And the message in this room is, act brown-eyed and you, too, can take off your collar. Act intelligently oh, and you, too, won't on. lose your collar. That's, None of you have, have acted intelligently yet. It wasn't long before the brown-eyed people bought into the idea that they were superior. You people... I had a girlfriend in school who was blue-eyed. She was so stupid. She was always copying off of my papers. These people were so rude and so noisy today, we couldn't hear any ourselves even talk. It was ridiculous. Eventually, the audience figured out the show was really about race. Now, he was so angry, he took off his collar way on early. Yeah, I, we need to talk about that, taking off the collar. These people can take off their collars, and then nobody knows what color their eyes are from a distance. How many of you people of color can take off the collar that we have put on you? How many of you can take off your color? But if a black male refused to follow your orders, or your husband's orders, or your father's orders, on the street, you would not see that as being highly principled. You would see him as being an uppity nigger. Well, we can see where this is going. She's saying that Everybody has racism in them. It's not really about the eye. She's trying to teach about racism. But she can't get away from the fact that God created the races, and you are going to be different. You can't help it. 
God to be like that. One race, the human race, and human beings created racism. Oh, I- we Sir Walter of the Sir Walter Jones Show. How y'all doing? I am he. It's Friday. 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 And uh, yeah, we've been in a we've been in a race this week. Yeah, we've been running, man. Cause man, uh, the the race isn't given to the swift or the strong, but, but to the one that yeah endures that makes it to the end. <laughs> Absolutely. And man, I'm telling you, it, today ends it all for me this week, and then uh, we'll start up again come Monday. Whew. I ain't going nowhere uh, until somebody put a muzzle on my mouth. Cause I'm, <laughs> the only time I'm quiet is when I'm asleep, and I ain't quiet then. Yeah, I heard you talking this week. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, today's I topic. Hear the secrets that you keep. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good stuff. Is God colorblind? You know, we always been hearing that about, you know, God, he ain't, you know, he don't see color. And I'm saying to myself, he made <laughs> color. He's far from How colorblind. colorful as the world is, and you think he's blind to what he made? He is so color uh, aware. Uh, he's and, color coordinated. Yes, he is very color coordinated. I mean, like, there's specific. There's so many specifics in mm-hmm. scripture about certain mm-hmm. things, certain mm-hmm. rituals, and the colors. We yes, just don't know sir. them as those names. That's good. That's good. And you, you know, each jewel, each mm-hmm. each jewel that's mentioned in the Bible, mm-hmm. one of its major character traits is its color. Yeah, you're right. The garments had color. That's right. And the people had different colors. Mm-hmm. Whether they were shades or two or shades, <laughs> uh, they may not have been uh, as, they know they had color. Yeah, they had color. They had they huge were, they really color did. differences. And, you know, the, and the best way to explain that is to, uh, you know, go to this book that uh, that he kind of created for us. You know, this thing y'all call the Bible. Oh, that book. You know, the white man's book. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Book uh-huh. of instructions. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. Before leaving earth. Yeah. Yeah. They call it the white man's uh, Bible. Uh, they can call it what they want. <laughs> <laughs> call that, it man. what you will. But you notice, okay, go to the beginning. God created Adam and Eve. Yeah. In Adam, all the races were. Yes. Because in Adam was Eve and two, and two as well. Yes. So in him was her. And them. Uh huh. So you had estrogen, you had testosterone in And him. we still have estrogen still and testosterone in both mm-hmm. species or both, both genders. Yeah. So he took Adam and made a melting pot. Yes. Of everything that's ever uh, is a living today that's human came out of that one man. Yes. Just an, it's an amazing magic trick. <laughs> I won't call it magic. I'll just call it majestic. <laughs> majestic. All right. That's a good one. Yes. Okay. And then. Because he basically. Made a self portrait. Yeah, it did. It does something. Yeah, made him in his image. Said, "Let us make man. Come yeah. on, y'all. Come yeah, here. Come on, yeah. yeah. so gather around. Gather around. Many. How yeah. about this? Look at this. Yeah, look at this. See him playing <laughs> in the dirt, <laughs> making. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Do this. Yeah. Okay, make. Put something in the middle of his face. Let's call it a nose. <laughs> Cause I want him to smell me. Yes, 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 yes. Don't give him wings, though. No, no, don't. Not don't yet. give him wings. No, no, don't no. give him. No, let him no. earn them. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we are gonna make a black man out of him, and then he gonna like wings. Yeah, <laughs> chicken wings. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> turkey wings. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Because that buffalo bird. wings. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know that bird. I'm on. He gonna die. Ooh, that, that I might live. That he might live. Yes, sir. Uh huh. And so uh, you look at then uh, Cain and Abel come out of that. And then Cain killed Abel. Then Cain started having children. Yes. Right? And then out of that, the lineage began. And then God gave uh, Adam and Eve Seth. And more after that. A whole bunch of more. Yeah, All he right? did stop. So Seth replaced Abel. And then he began to have more children, more children. We got to Methuselah. Then we got to Noah. And then. Mm, and so uh, forth. And so forth and so on. Because each of them started having them. Absolutely. Okay. And In so, math, they call it permutation. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Flood came, there was eight on the boat, okay, it rested on Mount Ararat, I, I believe it was called, and then they all got on the land, and then they began to procreate with each other. Again. Again, all right. Still uh, Adam. Uh-huh, still, still Adam. Okay. Uh, then God made a covenant with Noah, and uh, chapter 9, and then, well, then came Ham. And big eggs. <laughs> and the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizram. He is Mizram. And uh, and put down and came. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. Now those three boys saw. Uh, well, one saw that his father was naked. Uh huh. Okay, 
and the uh, and then the two boys say, "Hey, hey, man, whoa, whoa, what you doing?" So he they turned around so they wouldn't see his nakedness yes. and covered him. Yes. And then the Bible used the word he un- his son yeah. uncovered him. Mm. Okay. And people scholars fight over that. What oh that means? Some say he had <laughs> sex with his father. Yeah, Others say going. I can't go. You know, this no. this is not that kind of topic. No, but okay. not just that. I just. Mm. Th- Anyway, yeah, not, yeah, yeah, leave, yeah, 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 yeah. leave it open. Okay. Set the <laughs> and then, and then, uh, so he he said that his seed would be cursed. Mm. All right, so we have to be careful who got cursed. All right, is it Ham or is it Canaan? I see what I'm saying. Yes. So you have to see what the scriptures say. Uh, and then a whole bunch of you know, and then the Tower of Babel came on the scene, and this is where God confused their language. All right, because they were building this tower so high. He says, "You know what? They're gonna they're gonna reach me in a minute." Yeah. Okay. Uh, and they they have uh, they figured there's nothing else. There's nothing I can't do. Is what this what was in their minds. Yes. You know. And uh, God said, "No, nope, gotta confuse them." Because that was the him that, in their DNA. Yeah. Ooh. I that was I, the him I gave in them. So that was the him in them. Yes, making that happen. <laughs> It's good stuff. Okay, yeah, yeah, I need to write that down. Yeah, you write that down because you may not ever remember that. Okay, um, what I just say? You, were, I don't remember okay. what you said. I can't remember what you said. Okay, uh, and so, okay, so no, then no, the question is: Are the black people a result of the curse of Ham? Okay, <laughs> that's that's what the big question was. So, uh, no, pork. <laughs> no, no, uh, uh-uh. uh, so black Africans is merely one particular combination of inherited factors all right Mm. this means that these factors themselves though not in that combination were originally present in adam and eve as i said Mm -hmm. the belief that the skin color of black people is a result of a curse of ham on his descendants is nowhere taught no in the bible and it shouldn't be it should not be furthermore it was not ham who was cursed all right go to can you go to, to your bible Okay. Genesis nine eighteen. Gen nine eighteen. Gen nine. Oh, eighteen. The fact of mm-hmm. nine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, man, you 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 you, you also a uh, numerologist? No. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, you're not into numbers. Nah. Okay. Because I'm gonna say, because can you go play the the lottery for me? So, see, you know, and I uh, I ain't one of them them saints to say, Mm-mm, that's dirty money. I ain't gonna take it. <laughs> Please, man. If it's got mud on it, I'm gonna take it. <laughs> I'm taking it. <laughs> I could find it in a pig slot. <laughs> I'm going to wrench it off. Wrench it. <laughs> wrench this off. Genesis wrench 9, 18. Uh, what is that? In the KJV, it what, says, what, 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 And the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, mm-hmm. Ham, mm-hmm. Japheth, mm-hmm. and Ham is the father of Canaan. Mm-hmm. These are the three sons of Noah, mm-hmm. and of them was the whole earth overspread. Mm, okay, and that was 18? That was 18 and 19. Okay, now go to 25. All right, your Bible go that far? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And he said, curse be Canaan. Oh, curse be who? Canaan. Oh, I, th- why? I thought it said curse be Ham. No. Oh. He said, curse be Canaan. Oh. Mm. A servant of servants mm-hmm, mm-hmm. shall he be unto his brethren. I see. Brethren, not enemies, not other nations, oh, his brethren. Ain't that so? So we supposed to be enslaving each other? Mm. Mm. I don't think so. <laughs> Cause I ain't no slave. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, in Africa, they did it all the time. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And then they sold they sold those to uh, the Europeans, and they did it in Europe too. They sure did. They just called them serfs. Surf. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and indentured servants. Yes. Okay. All right. That was twenty five. That was twenty five. Okay. Now go to chapter ten. Chapter ten. Uh huh. And read the sixth verse. Let's see if there's something in there. And six. See says, what's in there. What's, what's up in there? Gen 10 and 6 says, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and the sons of Ham, uh-huh. Cush, uh-huh. Mizraim, yeah. and Put, Put. Mm-hmm. and Canaan. Yeah. And the sons of Cush, mm-hmm. Seba, mm-hmm. Havila, uh-huh. and Sapta, mm-hmm. and Rama, yes. and Septecha. Mm. And the sons of Rama, mm-hmm. Sheba, mm-hmm. and Dedan. Hey, speaking to ah, yeah. And Cush <laughs> begot Nimrod, mm-hmm. and he begot a mighty one in the earth. That Nimrod. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> we can do a whole story about him. Oh, my God, yes. Yeah, I know some Nimrods. Uh, okay, I know some numbskulls. <laughs> <laughs> so, furthermore, Canaan's descendants were probably mid brown skinned. Yeah. All right, Genesis 10 15. Not so much. We say black. Well, that was the son of Cush. Mm-hmm. We didn't talk about the sons of Canaan. Oh, that was the sons of Cush. Mm-hmm. I, I went further. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just went on. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Yeah. Because they talked about the Babylonian tapper and all that stuff. Uh-oh. Oh, them Babylons. The Babylons. You know, Tower I, Babel. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. I can call them Babylon. I know some folk who, who are full of Babel. I don't want to go about them. No, no. Yeah, they Babel. Okay. They Babylon, Babylon. <laughs> Uh, false Babylon teaching. Sister. <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? I'm telling you, this ain't Wednesday. <laughs> false teaching about him. I, think I knew that. <laughs> I didn't think you did. Uh, has been used to justify slavery and other non-biblical racist practices. Because a lot of the Europeans says y'all are supposed to be cursed. We're supposed to enslave you because you were cursed because of him. And the ones that say it mm-hmm. are not of the divine right. They search you got away. Who say hey, we gonna make y'all the ones because we don't want to go back and be that. Wow, wow. Uh, it is traditionally believed that the African nations are largely uh, uh, hematic or hemitic yeah. uh, ham uh, yes. uh, because of the Kushites. Hematite. Kush was the son of the ham. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ballpark Frank. Plump when you cook them. Oh, um, wow. Are thought to have lived where <laughs> Ethiopia is today. <laughs> Genesis suggests that the dis- dispersion was probably along family lines, and it may be that Ham's descendants were on an average darker than, say, J. Phillips. Okay. Okay. However, it could just as easily have been the other way around. Now, Rahab, mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus, Matthew 1, was a Canaanite. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. A descendant of Ham, she, she must have married an Israelite. All right. Since this was a union approved by God, it showed that the particular race she came from was not important, they're saying here. It mattered only that she trusted in the true God of Israel. Okay. Ruth, a Moabite, a Moabite, also features in the genealogy of Christ. She expressed faith in the true God before her marriage to Boaz, Ruth one sixteen. The only marriages God warned against are God's people marrying unbelievers uh-huh. and not so much marrying outside of their race. Okay. So here's where we get the uh, misunderstanding that God is uh, is colorblind. <laughs> okay, I can he, give you that. Yeah, he... He's not colorblind. He is about holiness. Right. Because yeah. more colors come when you mix them. Come, see, see. You get on my nerve when you tell the truth. Oh, okay, I'm glad you're aggravated. <laughs> <laughs> you don't call me no liar. <laughs> so, uh, the Bible, well, let's see. Paul, Paul Rogers is saying here, um, mm, 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 jo- Johann Frederick uh, Blumbach theorize that there are five races and the dominant come from the uh caucus the, the caucus mountain or the caucus, caucus yeah, or mountain. caucasians mm-hmm, caucasoids. Mm-hmm, caucasoid. absolutely this is where race racism that we know come from yeah yeah that uh that johan frederick bloombach oh, wow you need to go somewhere and play bach um <laughs> so <laughs> no, 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 no! Don't do Bach. Don't whistle Bach. Why is he whistling Bach? Okay, uh, the, get Bach. Get Bach. Uh, 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 the Bible does not explicitly give us uh, uh, the origin of the different races they're saying here, or skin colors in humanity. It actually, uh, in actuality, there is only one race. That's the human race. Pretty much. Yes. Within the human race, it's a diversity in skin color. And other physical they were scattered by yes, the Lord. Sir. Found yes, in Genesis sir. 11. Yes, yes, sir. Mm. If y'all can see me beat this boy. Some speculate uh, <laughs> that uh, <laughs> when God confused the languages at the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, uh, he also created racial diversity, uh, such as the darker skin of uh, Africans being better equipped genetically to survive the excessive heat in Africa. All right, and that's why we were enslaved, because they enslaved the Indians, but they were not working out, because they could not handle the extreme, yeah, the extreme working conditions, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because they were nomadic, yeah, and when the conditions were not comfortable, yeah, they had, they no had to move, move. on. <laughs> yes, that's right. And they follow the moon. Yes, sir. And they go. Yeah, follow the dream. Oh. go. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. And you don't hear this history in your, in your Buffalo tell will go. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> why? I can't do it. I have some great uh, Native American friends uh, in South Dakota when I lived there, and I'm telling you, 
some of the stories they have told me will make your teeth fall out. I can believe it because I, I can see them defending and fighting mm-hmm. fiercely for what was theirs, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. especially after being hospitable. Yeah. Ain't nothing more aggravated than to say, okay, I know you need. Come on, I'll share you. I'll give you what's right, mine. But then right. you want to just take it from me? Right, after right. I, man, after, please. Man, don't. I can't. I can't. I get upset when I talk about their history and my history. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I have yeah. to take some uh, some medicine before I yeah. get on the show. Because as much as we have to mm-hmm. complain about legitimately, mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. have that and some. Oh, absolutely. See, we were moved from our home. Yes. yes. They, they were just kicked they out. They were of just this. kicked out of this. Yeah. This is true. This is true. Uh, Nina Simone's gonna sing. For oh, us. really? Yeah. To be oh, young, really? gifted and black. Yeah. Oh. A song by Nina Simone. I'm going to tell y'all about it after the song is over, okay? Because, you know, I have to give a historic history of the songs that we play. Nina Simone, go to the, go to Spreaker.com if you want to hear the whole Nina Simone story that we did a few weeks ago. It was a great, great show. Yes, it was. Love it. All right. But I want to hear her sing. Young Gift in the Black, Sir Walter Jones Show. Standing on the front stoop, hanging out the window, watching all the cars go by, roaring as the breezes blow. Crazy lady living in a bag. Nina Simone to be young, gifted, and a Negro. Uh huh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm proud. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm telling you. Uh, written by Nina Simone. Uh, lyrics by Weldon Irving. Mm-hmm. It was written in the memory of uh, Simone's late friend Lorraine Hansberry, author of the play Raisin in the Sun. Y'all yes. know that? Great, great movie. Uh, the song was originally where recorded. Michael Evans come from. Yeah, Michael Evans. Yes, the right. The boy who played that, he was, yeah. the, he was a yeah. star on Broadway. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, sir. The, the song was originally recorded and released by uh, Simon in 1969. What else happened in 1969? I was born. You was born in 69? Yeah. My Lord. I think we went to the moon then, too. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And then those uh, hippies, they did that thing in the park in 69, yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something, yeah, Scott, that, that's, something uh, uh, what do y'all call it, that thing there? Woodstock. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Stock was, market. I love yeah, Woodstock. I <laughs> Uh, with the song featured in 1970s 
album Black Gold and was a civil rights anthem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know who else sang this song and recorded it? Uh, 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 yeah, my boy, my boy, Don, mm-hmm. uh, Donnie Hathaway. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He put a gospel swing. Everything on is it. everything. That's right. Aretha Franklin did it on her 1972 album. Okay. Bob. And Marcia, whoever that is, uh, did theirs. I thought you were going to say Bob Dylan. Uh-huh. I'm like, ain't no way, ain't no well, way Bob Dylan could do that. Uh, I know, exactly. He, no, no, right. Can you imagine Bob Dylan do that? Bob Dylan. Do big dog. Oh, man, y'all. Get that and uh, okay. I'm a <laughs> but we laughing, but guess who did it? Who? Elton John. <laughs> he recorded a version to be young if back prior to his solo success. Sure did. Intended to be released as a low budget sound alike version of the original. It was later reissued <laughs> on a compilation album. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> to be young, gifted, and gay. Okay. Oh. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. I'm about to get some letters, some cards, too. Yes. Some cards and letters. Sir. It won't even be my birthday. He's going to send me some cards. <laughs> Thank you for all your cards <laughs> and letters. <laughs> Berlin. <laughs> uh, we're going to A, young, white, and colorblind. And these are Caucasian children, all right? And they're talking about, yeah, I'm colorblind. I don't see color. But listen to what they're saying here as they've been polled. How do you feel talking with a, with a person of a different race? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, I feel extremely comfortable. Half my friends are black, and it's totally normal. I... Don't give a sh-t. Sorry if I shouldn't be swearing, but about different colors, different races. Yes. I could care less what race someone is. I've never, I was never taught to really notice it. Almost all young white Americans I spoke to consider themselves colorblind, that they do not see race. In fact, three out of four young white Americans say society would be better off if we never acknowledged race. Most people making the comment about being blind to color, in my experience, have been primarily white, and it's a dismissive comment. This feels like you're trying to avoid what the real issue is. Colorblind? That's a cop out, man. It's for people too scared to face it. If being colorblind means running away from racial issues, well, it's working. Less than one in three young white people say they've talked about race with their family. If I bring up any sort of race issue with my parents, they, they immediately assume that I'm demonizing them. And four out of five young white people say they feel uncomfortable discussing racial issues. It's scary and no one wants to do it. I think that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's truth right there. Hmm. Uh, they're like, you know, that's a cop out. Yes. But a lot of whites use that. You oh, know, yeah, they will. Three of my best friends are black. <laughs> right. And then I said, I don't see color. <laughs> Why How did you, you know they me? were black then? <laughs> it is amazing. So there's a there's a, a weird color scheme going on in Chicago. Uh, not Chicago, but the America. Okay. Uh, and uh, so I'm a feature the Oprah Winfrey show on a couple of these sound bites. Okay. Uh, to kind of show some of the things that she did, because one thing that I don't have in the files, and I was looking for it today on online, because I just came up with this topic maybe a couple of hours ago. So y'all pray my strength. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, thought I, it was well thought out. No, <laughs> look at his eyes. His eyes bucked up. <laughs> he know better. I ain't know what I was gonna talk about this morning. I think that's probably why I didn't send uh, Dana nothing because uh, I ain't know what I was gonna talk about. <laughs> Dana is our uh, multimedia, social media uh, ah. expertise, and uh, sh- she gets on me every morning. Uh, bro, I need some. What's your topic? I'm like, Lord. give me a minute. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. <laughs> yeah. Let me take some practice. Hold up. She's on. She's on it though. Um. So the um. Uh. Oprah Winfrey had some guys on the stage, women and men, and they were dressed differently. Some had, one was dressed in a suit like me, what I have on right now, and then another, another, uh, uh, a black guy was dressed in faded jeans. Okay. Okay. Uh, shoes faded. He had on a white tee, I think it was. Okay. A white guy had on a suit like me. Okay. He was clean. Okay. All right. And then another woman, a woman had, uh, she had a briefcase and looked like a CEO. And, all mm-hmm. and, all. and she tested the audience. She said, okay, uh, show of hands. How many of you guys, if you saw this white guy walking down the street, he says, she says, be honest, walking down the street uh, in your neighborhood, that you would cross the street or you would be a little nervous. And, and nobody raised their hand. <laughs> she says, mm-hmm. she says, now look at look at this black guy here. Uh, 
How many of you would be afraid? Of course, it was obvious yes. that half of the room raised their hands. Of course. Okay. Uh, and then, then they pointed to the ladies. Mm. Okay. Then she asked the people on the panel to stand up and tell them who you are. The, okay. The white guy stood up. She says, she says, tell me who you are. He says, I just spent about 15 years in jail. He says, uh, for a violent crime. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. He says, uh, and, um, you know, I, I, have a, I have a felony, and, on, and I'm getting treatment, and on, 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 on. And the audience, the audience gasped. <gasps> okay. Mm-hmm. She, she told the, white, the black guy, stand up. Tell us who you are. Dr. Santos. He like says, that. I'm the inventor of FUBU. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he says, I'm multimillionaire. Right. You know, and he says, I, I donate so, so-and-so to children who are this, and I, I don't this and this. And the audience, of course, they went, <gasps> Yeah. <laughs> And she said, you see what's going on here, right? Yeah. You're judging books. By their covers. By his covers. And you guys, are, you will walk across the street from a guy who probably be the one who could really help you. And it's, it's, the, it's this white guy here who might have been the one who murdered your whole family. I see. Because, you know, sometimes when they murder, <sighs> it's mass murder. It's like opening up a, a roach bomb. In the <laughs> you house. see what I'm saying? They, just, they won't get rid of everybody. Yes. You know, a black guy, he'll kill a guy and he walk, he'll run. Yeah, from a distance. Yes, yeah, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah, but... The, but you, they, yeah, they're gory. They usually use a knife. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a gun, not a knife. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm, the, the black mm-hmm. guy uses a, a gun, mm-hmm, he'll drive by, yep, or, yep. you know... But yep, he's out. It's, yeah, it's, it's like, uh-huh. I ain't trying to do all that. And 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 we're not trying to bring about a... Villainize. A, yeah, yeah. We're not trying to bring about a, a race war here on the show, but we only showing you what we keep seeing on TV. If you notice, the average person, 95% or more of the mass murderers are white. And it's usually because of some mental illness or uh, uh, how they were raised up in their families. Yeah, I ain't seen nobody ain't as, as, as hard t- as black kids have in school. I haven't seen one of them walk in their high school and just start wiping people it's out. It's amazing. Uh, I ain't seen them walk in no movie theater and start no. wiping people out. Mm-hmm. I ain't seen them go up on no, no army base and start mm-hmm. wiping people out. Mm-mm. Ain't mm-hmm. you know, no, they ain't going to church. They, 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 no, they, no. They, no, they too afraid of Jesus. They too afraid of Jesus, yeah, and Mrs. Johnson. Yes, and Mrs. Johnson. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they won't do it. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. The only time we did see that is when those, those snipers, those DC Father snipers. Son. Yes. Mm-hmm. How, and we were we were upset when we realized they were black. But again, he was a sniper. He was far off. He, sure he was. wasn't up close. You're right. Yeah. yeah he was doing what up. he was trained to do. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes you wonder. Okay. Oh, now, how they, I wonder. Now we, now, right, right. That's good. <laughs> now, are we sitting here profiling? Yes, we are. Of course, because we are profiled all every the time. day. And uh, and some of my, my white listeners listening to this and saying, "Y'all profiling us." Well, y'all wake up and profile us. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Man, this is a hard week for me, man. I'm telling <laughs> you, I had to buy an extra dog. <laughs> ain't that a? I had to put. <laughs> <laughs> man, ain't that new? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to B. Uh, Oprah visits a county where no black per- no black person lived for seventy five years, <sighs> not a one. You know that you know the town here called Cicero. Yeah, you know, you know, I remember Cicero. You know, very well, very well. No blacks oh, lived there for no, many years. No, no, no. Not a one was on the police. You couldn't force. even ride the Roosevelt bus. Nope. Between after nine o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> between a uh, 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 Keeler. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in and, and Austin, you couldn't ride nope. the bus. You bet not. I, I remember a black bus driver. They threw a brick yeah. at the bus because he was black riding black. through Cicero. Martin Luther King, when he came to town, Oof. that's where he marched. He, yeah. And he says, it's an amazing thing that he said. He says, out of all of the stuff I've got put up with in the South. Never had to put up with stuff that he saw here in Chicago. He had never seen racism like that. Between Market Park. And they tried to kill him down in Alabama yeah. and, and and Georgia and, you know. But here, he says he never seen it. Now that says something. Says a lot. It ain't much changed. Nope. Mm-mm. Cause even though we have gone in those areas, mm-hmm. they've just taken on new areas. That's that's all it is. Or taking the areas we left. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Uh, so B, uh, Oprah Winfrey uh, pulled these people, uh, and let's see what they got to say. In 1987, the Oprah Show had only been on the air for five months. Trouble was brewing in the Deep South in a county where no black person had lived in 75 years. For the first time, Oprah left her studio and headed straight into the eye of the storm. We bring you today to Forsyth County, Georgia, 
just 30 miles north of Atlanta, which in the past few weeks has gained the reputation of being a hotbed of racism. Here are just some of the images of Forsyth County in past weeks that were broadcast around the globe. There's no niggers here. Why should they even come, you know? They asked for it. They got it. So why'd they come back, you know? It's hard to believe that this show aired nearly 30 years ago. Oprah's show in Forsyth was causing an uproar. As protests were going on outside, tempers were heating up inside, too. Can somebody tell me, where did the people who came, come from who were shouting, nigger, go home? They came from, right they came from where? Yes, ma'am. They came from, my name's Frank Shirley. I'm the head of the committee to keep Forsyth and Dawson County white. They... Let him speak. Please let him speak. He has the right to speak. Okay, the news media is covered up. There were thousands of white people that came out to join our white people's protest. This is the largest white people's protest against communism and race mixing in the last 30 years. The news media has deliberately covered up the nature of the Brotherhood marchers, many of whom are commun outright communists and homosexuals, and our organization was the only one that dared take a stand against them. They, marched, they brought in so thousands. you're not just anti-black, you're also anti-gay, too. I'm opposed to communism, race mixing, and low morals, and homosexuals are of low morals, in my opinion. You don't believe that people of other races have the right to live here? They have the right to live wherever they want to, but we have the right to choose if we want a white community also. That's why we moved here. You believe? That's what you believe. Excuse me. Why is it that there are people in this county, obviously, who are afraid of black people? What is it you are afraid black people are going to do? I mean, that's what I'd like to know. I'm, I'm afraid of uh, them coming to Forsyth County. I lived in Atlanta. I was born in Atlanta. And uh, in 1963, the first blacks were bused to West Fulton High School. And I go down there now, and I see my neighborhood and my community, which was a nice community, a nice neighborhood, and now it's nothing but a rat-infested slum area because they don't care. They don't care. Thank you. No, what, stand up. What, stand up. You know, you know. Uh, do you mean they, us, the entire black race, the entire you black race? Blacks and you have niggers. What's the difference between I've a black talked, person and a nigger to you? I've talked to black people. Black people, they don't want to come up here. They, they don't want to cause any trouble. That's a black person. A nigger wants to come up here and cause trouble all the time. That's the difference. Well, I yes. have something to say. I'm very upset about what's going on. I don't think that Forsyth County has been portrayed right. Uh, it's not only by what's outside right now, but I just really hate to think that it's going to take someone either black or white getting hurt or losing their lives before people can sit down and talk this out. It is a time for change. There's nothing we can do about it. Everybody, ha there's one God. And I just hate to think that someone is going to get hurt before the people get some sense about them and talk about this and get it like it's supposed to be. It what, how is it supposed to be? Black and white together in Forsyth County. There's no other way. Oprah says she and her producers knew it was dangerous to go down there. But they were smart enough to know to leave town to before the sun went down. That's still going on, even though that show was 1987, I think it was. Yeah. Oh, you can go and back in some, some of them areas, and they'll say the same thing. My father said it. Yep. <laughs> yep. 25 years ago, and I believe it today. Uh, <laughs> Personally, that, I don't, they can mm -hmm. have it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't. I, I don't go where I'm celebrated. No, right, I'm tolerated. I, I can't do that. That's too much stress to wake up and wonder if you're going to have a swastika on your door. Yeah. Um. Now, that brother, that little boy. That nine, uh, that uh, that boy who killed the nine people. Uh -huh. All right, you see how young he was, right? Yeah, he was a kid. So many of us think that racism is dying off because the young people are ha ha are a new breed of people who don't believe in racism. But you see how young he was, and he killed those people. Why? Because he he wanted, he said he wanted to kill some niggas. That's right. And he wanted to cause a race war. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, and he That's hid right. behind the the flag. You're right. Okay. So it ain't dying in the youth. No, it's <laughs> it's a petri dish. Yeah. So there's pros and cons to raising up a child uh, and and what you call values. It's called uh, uh, let's see, fossilization is a word I learned years uh -huh. ago. 
here's what fossilization is. Uh, take out your pen and paper, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> and learn. Uh, but <laughs> thanks, Brittany. Brittany got a paper. <laughs> it's, it's black paper. She got a hand. <laughs> fossilization pretty much is teaching someone something uh, that you were taught. Yes. That's what fossil, you know. You know that. Yeah. Okay. Whether it's right or whether it's wrong, you're teaching them something. And the, the, the pros and cons of that is that you could be teaching them racism to a child and the child will be raised to believe that this is the norm and this is what's right. Yep. And this is what's acceptable. And so I'm going to continue in what my father taught me. That's why the fight over the Confederate flag was so huge mm -hmm. among those who were uh, waving the flag down there because they were saying, the main thing they were saying was my grandfather yes. fought for this flag. Right. It didn't ma matter what the flag represented. Yes, it's the fact that his grandfather fought there for you it. There you go. Yes. And so your grandfather's a treason. Uh-huh. Your grandfather's a Benedict Arnold. It don't matter. It's my grandfather. Right. And I think that's why it is dangerous uh, to raise children on what you call values. Family values. Family values. Because your value is not is against God's value. Especially when you didn't really know your grandfather. Mm -hmm. And you need to understand what he taught, mm -hmm. why he mm -hmm. taught it. Yes. Because what he taught and why he taught may have been right to him. But mm -hmm. once you learn no better, you know it's mm -hmm. not right at all. There are songs that we sing that are racist, or racist songs, and we don't even know they are. There's a song called, Pardon Me Boy, Is This a Chattanooga Choo Choo? Yeah. That's a beautiful song, isn't it? Yeah. Track 29. Man, I should sing that song. Then man, then jazz, then then. Yeah, and then they'll say, Boy, you can give me a shot. Yeah. You know what boy was? Yeah, that's that's George. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, come here, boy. That's mm -hmm. what they call all of them, boy. Yeah, they were the, right, well, we, I live in Pullman, Pullman area. Pullman Porters. Pullman Porters. All they were black. were named George. Come here, boy. Come here, George. Give me a shine. Boy. I said, what the? I never even stopped. I slowed this record down to hear what they were saying. Um, uh, Jimmy Crackcorn and I, I don't care. care. Jimmy Crackcorn, I don't care. White folk taught us that. Yeah. Jimmy Crackcorn, I don't care. Yeah. My master's going away. We sing this as, as little children. <laughs> Mine's a fun song, ain't it? Yeah, they make it sound fun. Yeah, so. yeah. My master's going. My away. master's going away. We had no idea. And this is the stuff that, again, this is fossilization. This is so-called values. Oh, I wish I was in Atlanta, God. Old see, times no, have not forgotten. See, look, look away, look away, you look away, Dixie Lady. You get on my nerves. Mm. <laughs> you add to my madness. You know? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is us. This is this is sad. But let's go to see here. O.J. Simpson really showed many of them <sighs> the how divided we are. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, Nobody cared about right or wrong. It was <laughs> white. Yep. That's right. <laughs> or wrong. Uh-huh. Let's hear that. Smack dab in the middle of the Oprah show's 25-year run was the trial of the century, O.J. Simpson's murder trial, a defining moment in our culture that spoke volumes about where we stood as a nation when it came to race. The lights were on. The cameras were rolling right here in this studio as the verdict came down live. It is shortly before noon Chicago time, and history is in the making. By the time you all see this, you will already know the O.J. verdict. But we, just like the rest of the country, are waiting to hear it live for the very first time. We, the jury in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon the Cole Brown Simpson, a human being, as charged in count one of the information. The jury has spoken. Obviously, you're very happy. I'm very happy for his family, for his children. I think justice was served. Not everyone here is happy, however. No, I'm not happy. I just feel like she's rolling over in her grave. And, and he got, she said if he ever did it, he would get away with it. That's what she said. And he, he knows he did. I really believe that he is guilty. However, I think that California is relieved that he was shown not guilty because... The blacks would have burned the city down. I'm very sure of that. I believe this is a travesty of the American justice system. This is the epitome of what power and money can do for you. You can get away with the most heinous of crimes. Uh, I think time will tell who did it, and we will all look back on this day and say the jury made a mistake. Yeah. Go ahead, yes, finish. You have he said doubt he was do about it. OJ. You have doubt about Furman. You have doubt about. Just but about everybody that testified, lied, and came back. 
There's just been lies on both sides and all throughout, and you have not, the state did not prove that OJ did this. There was more, there was reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt that, that, that he was framed? It was not him. Oprah says it was very tough to hold back her strong opinions that day, but she was committed to pulling back the anger in the air in hopes of revealing our fears and exposing the truth of why the country was so divided. Yeah, did you hear that screaming that was going on? You, yeah, you can hear loud and clear. And you could also hear the uh, the lack of applause. Yeah. Because you, you knew the audience was larger than that. Oh, of course. But you only heard like a yeah. few few applause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was like, yay! And then you hear, yeah. That was the white no. folk. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, I, and I saw, I remember this one like yesterday when it happened. And I'm looking at the TV and I'm saying, wow, now I get it. <laughs> I was in a classroom, and I found out from a Jewish special ed lady. She came in. He's innocent. He's yes. He's innocent. Little short white lady. She she was just, get out of here. Yes, but she loved black people. And she says, and she was wise. She says, no way one man could do all of that. All of that yeah. in the short the time span they're giving. And let, if they know anything about anatomy, with the knife that they say he had, it was not sharp enough to decapitate her. With just a single blow, mm-hmm. it wasn't sharp enough to mutilate breasts like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you could do it, but it took time to hack through. Mm-hmm. She says, mm-hmm. "You ever cut through meat?" She says, "You know." She says, "My dad was a butcher." You know, so she brought in logic and experience that made a whole lot of sense. Either more than one person did it, or you know, she says, or no, she says, oh, more than one person did this, wow. and you know, she she brought in points of view that made you go, "Yeah, wow." That's something else. Uh, so she didn't believe he did it. She says if he did it, he had help. Sure. And that's that's where some of the sympathizers go. He yeah. had help. Uh, and if he didn't physically do it, he paid for it. Mm. He paid for some, someone to do it. Um, you know, I, I feel about this like I do about Sandra Bland. I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. Yeah. All we know is two people. Are Father dead. alone will know all yep, about it. Yep, yep, yep. Because uh, y'all still trying to figure out who killed JFK. I'm I'm not wasting my time trying to figure that out. I'm trying to make sure I don't get killed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Whether a Cuban did it or whether the CIA did it. <laughs> <laughs> or the IAC. Is that you? Yeah, oh yeah, them too. Or the AIC. Or the, yeah. Or ICA. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, the RCA. <laughs> Element OP. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I will say AIG, but I think they okay, closed I see the doors. Why. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to Ann Coulter. She is uh, uh, greatly loved by black Americans all over the world. Uh, she's a, a Fox News uh, pundit. And um, when she comes on the TV, I can, I can hear a, a, a choral uh, <laughs> regurgitation from black people <laughs> when she speaks. It's just amazing. I've man. never had the privilege. Oh, you haven't? No, I, I can't. I can't. Do you you can't stomach it more than thirty. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'll occasionally sit there. I'd rather watch C-SPAN and and listen to paint dry. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you know the guy on PBS who, who back in the day was paint that just sit there and paint. Yeah. yeah with the hair. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah but I'd be amazed that was what he come inter- up with. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting. But if you are down and depressed, okay, and you really need an upper. Don't take pills. Turn Fox on. You get angry, huh? You get it so angry. You it disturb it should disturb your day and you like Wait. it'd be like going to the workout center of, you, you know <laughs> LA Fitness. Your blood pressure get out. <laughs> and Coulter. Let's see what she gotta say. Yeah, but but if there is more black crime, it's because of poverty and because blacks get arrested more, not necessarily because they're more prone to crime. Would you not agree with that? Um, I'm not sure I understand all that. The point is, if we, ab- if you abort more, I'm blacks, saying it's would, not would inherent in their. Bl- I'm saying it's not their blackness that causes the crime. It's the poverty that causes the crime. I don't know if poverty causes crime. I mean, I don't know what, what mother. Poverty is. doesn't no, cause. No, it's not blackness that causes crime. Yes, correct. You, you don't think poverty don't think that- causes crime? See, I do think that down deep the Republicans do have a problem with black people. I really do, because during the, the during the New Orleans. <laughs> wait a second. You're you the one to, who wants to abort them second. to cut down on crime. <laughs> but during the New Orleans problem. They were obsessed with shooting looters. Looters being a property crime. While all this death was going on, the thing that really obsessed you guys was let's shoot the people 
who were getting something out of Radio Shack. No, I'm they, glad you mentioned New Orleans because I think that shows the problem the Democrats have with the blacks, and that is they're constantly willing to, you know, take the votes of black folks, but but then accuse them of engaging in cannibalism, of raping two-year-olds in order to better attack the president. You know, when it serves their political ends, they'll say the most horrible, unbelievable things about blacks, as they did, by the way, in the 2000 election, when they um, blamed the problem with the butterfly ballot on, oh, well, you know, blacks are stupid, they couldn't figure it out. Oh, no, Democrats will say horrible things about blacks if it helps them politically, as they did with New Orleans. I didn't know it was the Democrats who were saying those things. I yeah, thought to it, attack Bush. I thought it was the stupid media. Um, that's one and the same. <laughs> Sorry, that's an overlap. <laughs> Oh, no, okay, right. hey, we've Republic. made progress. That was a groan Republican. and not a boo. <laughs> wow. She sounded like W.C. Fields. I was like, mm, I don't know if I'm blind. Uh, she didn't know. She's <laughs> my chicken head. Uh, yeah, she... Um, she sounded like Popeye before swimming. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know I, and she's... No, Paul Bear. Paul, uh, right, right. Clone Harper. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, did you say Paul? <laughs> Paul Bear. What'd you say, Paul? <laughs> right, 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 right. You got to be a certain age to understand who that is. The Hillbilly Bears. Yeah, the Hillbilly Bears. Was, was that Hannah Barbera? Yeah. Yeah, that's one of their productions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't know about that. Mm -hmm. McGill yeah. Gorilla for sale. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, we're going to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the say. It's the 5 o'clock p.m. in Chicago Central. I haven't heard a song, I haven't heard this song in a while. You know, we do these uh, Ebony and Ivory songs. We did one yesterday with okay. Michael, I'm uh, sorry, Stevie Wonder and Paul McCartney. All right. This one here is The Winans and Michael McDonald. Oh, you know what you do with The <laughs> What a fool believe. Yeah. Oh, oh, I did a song with The Winans. <laughs> Love has no color. Love has no color. So on the show, show. You're my bro.
following show is paid programming and does not necessarily express the views and opinions of Urban Broadcast Media and its subsidiaries. Thank you for listening to UBM Praise. Friday. 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 Love Has No Color, The Winings and Michael McDonald from The Decisions Project. It was the fifth studio album by American gospel group The Winings, released 1987. Y'all, that's a long time ago. Yeah, Lord. Uh-huh. Almost, 30, almost 30 years ago. Man, what were you, what were you doing at that? Graduating high school. Really? Yeah. Mm. Let's see, five, six. That was second year in college. And I'm trying to. I was listening to this song, trying to make yeah, it, yeah, trying to get over it. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah. like a jungle sometimes. Make you wonder. <laughs> yeah, Quest Records. Uh, I remember. Oh, I heard that record label label. You know, you know, you know who that is. Who that is? That Quincy Jones. Yeah, but I don't. Uh huh. His first, I think his first project with them was uh, "Let My People Go." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was These a, are my people. Yeah, that's when they were starting to say, "Oh, that, they, oh, they, 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 they ain't saved no more." That was the second album I ever bought in my life. Okay. The first one was a Parliament. Was up, uh, yeah, Parliament. Um, which one was it? Uh, the, the the one that Kirk Franklin. Um, oh, start with uh, 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 those. Yeah, that was the first one I bought. Yep. And I was I I, I was just said to myself, wow, mothership connection, man. Yeah. The uh, artists on those albums. <laughs> That came out what nineteen seventy seven something like that. I, don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was a little boy. I had no business looking yeah. at him. Yeah. No. <laughs> the album was written and produced by Marvin Winans along with the uh, producer uh, Quincy Jones and Barry Hankerson. You keep looking at some of these credits, you'll see Barry Hankerson on some of that stuff. The album is a blend of contemporary gospel of R and B. Also includes the Grammy winning single "Ain't No Need to Worry." Oh yeah. Night is gonna turn. It's a, how ironic is it to have Anita Baker and Michael McDonald on the same album? Ah, oh, man. Because you can't understand neither one of them. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> all they was missing was Joe Cocker. <laughs> baby. That's all you heard was baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> we can do it. We do it. I need a Baker show, matter of fact. We are? Next week. I don't need no Baker. My wife do mm-hmm. it for me. Mm-hmm. We're doing it on Tuesday. I, don't need I may baker. have to move it from Tuesday because. Brittany ain't gonna be here Tuesday. Oh, and I can't I can't do shows like that without having. I will be. Alvin somebody. will be here either. Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to move that show because I need somebody qualified. Mm-hmm. Oh, so uh, Alvin ain't qualified? You trying to tell me I'm not uh, qualified? Uh, well, no, 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 no. <laughs> you, you ain't qualified. Okay. Uh, Anita Baker, uh, "Love Has No Color," featured singer and songwriter. Uh, yeah, Michael McDowell. The album peaked number thirty. Billboard top gospel. Okay, uh, it's five o'clock. Five or seven in the PM wow. in Chicago. Time flies when you're having fun. Um, Giuliani, remember that mayor who keep throwing out? They call him the nine one one mayor. Mm-hmm. That, that was you know Rudolph Giuliani. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know uh, how we had a comedian yesterday who kept saying, you know, when you walk in the black church, you just say yeah, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or New York, just say Giuliani. Yeah, just say Giuliani. He, but he always said nine one one. Even when his, when his, some of his speeches when he yes. was trying to run, he'll throw nine one one out there. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's it. If it wasn't nine one one, I wonder who who would he be? Um, yeah. So Giuliani explodes over the, the black crime and listen closely to what he says because he represents the consensus of a lot of those people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would say, and I'm gonna say this too. A lot of times they tell the truth on statistics. Unfortunately, the, some of them are the wrong people to say it. And statistics are only truthful based upon data that's been input. Yeah, this is true. This is true. People don't realize that. Cause I don't trust all polls. Oh, you can't. Mm-hmm. No I, polls. No polls. Mm-mm. No, Mm-mm. You can't trust Mm-mm. them polls. Or you can't trust them Those. stands. Because <laughs> no polls ain't loyal. Uh, <laughs> so let's go to Giuliani and see what he got to say. Starting with Mayor Koch, Mayor Dinkins, myself, Mayor Bloomberg, and now Mayor de Blasio, we've tried very hard to make the police force in New York City as proportionate as we possibly can. We go out of our way to do that. I think we do a pretty good job, not a perfect job. Uh, but the reality is... You're not on is, this I'm, list, so that's a good thing. I, <laughs> right, right. I was glad to see that we weren't, by the way. But uh, the fact is, I, I find it very disappointing that you're not discussing the fact that 93% of blacks in America are killed by other blacks. We're talking about the exception here. Well, look, the, first the, of the all, go ahead, Michael. Well, no, this is about a distrust finish. issue. We are, talking, well, we, are, we are talking about the significant exception. The police department as a uh, agent of the state to uphold the law. So in both, both cases, the equivalency that the mayor has drawn, which is exacerbated tensions that are deeply... 
embedded in American it's culture. The reason, black people who kill Mr. black Mayor, people me, go to jail. Black people who kill black people go to jail. White people who are policemen who kill black people do not go to jail. And if, hardly, if a jury can indict a ham sandwich, why is it taking so long? Mr. Mayor, it's let me ask you this. It's the trust it's issue, hardly, though. This is a trust hardly, issue. It's hardly insignificant. I didn't it's say it was insignificant. I said it was it out of proportion reason, in your false equivalency, it is the sir. Reason, it is the reason for the heavy police presence in the black community. Not at all. Not at all. 93%. The police presence, the police presence cannot make a distinction between those who are criminals right. and those who call the police let to me stop see you the criminals. Spend, right, let me, what about the poor black let, child let that is killed by another black child? Why those aren't you Those people go that? to jail. I do protest it. I'm a minister. They go to Why don't you talk about the, the, the way in which white well, policemen why don't you have undercut the ability? So of why don't you live? cut Michael. it down so so many b white police officers don't have to be in black areas? I they put don't white have to police be. It's a matter of the the uh, effect of the state 70, occupying those forces, sir. How about my seventy to seventy five percent of the crime in my city? How about your attitude takes place reinforces in black the problematic? Uh, All right, I think this is a debate. That prevails in the culture. So this how is a about debate. you reduce crime? This Absolutely. is a debate. When I become mayor, you I'll do have that. Yeah, that's Michael Eric Dyson, I believe. Yes, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, uh, and again, uh, part of what Giuliano was saying was true. Partly. Uh huh. The problem again is when I give the statistics on white people, the white people say to me, <laughs> "How you know? You don't live with us. See, <laughs> you ain't white. How you know? Uh, black people are just as guilty when a white man tells you the statistics about your neighborhood. We're like, mm mm." You don't belong here. You don't know me. You don't live in my house. I live in South Dakota with the Native Americans. Okay. They acted the same way. We said, you Native Americans, y'all all are drunk. Y'all all on methamphetamine. And you having uh, children You having, uh, children with your children. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of them were doing that. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of incest was going on at, uh, on the reservations. Why? Uh, I think, you, you notice poverty was brought out with Ann Coulter. Okay. I believe poverty has a huge effect on the attitudes of people and their actions. I believe that. But uh, uh, you can't you can't blame poverty as the foundation of it though because I know a lot of people in poverty who character who, who are great citizens. Yes. They're poor. Uh, they're poor but they have good character. They sure do. So you can't keep blaming poverty for that. I've never blamed poverty for poor yeah. character. No. Cuz you no. can be a rich mm -hmm. You can be rich and have incest. In fact, there are rich people who commit mm -hmm. incest all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Someone said that when um, they said sh Chicago was about to get warm. This was the winter time and the crime is down. They said it's about to get warm, y'all. This is March. Get ready. Uh, because as soon as the days get warmer, the uh, the killings are going to go up. And I heard a politician say, mm, you can't. I think it was the mayor and the police chief. You can't. You can't blame the weather on the uprise of, of crime in, in the city of Chicago. Yes, that's true. Yeah. And um, I looked at it and I, and I had mixed emotions about it. Because if the polls and the statistics of, of what we see, because we, you know, although we don't trust all polls, we trust some of them. Because all you got to do is look on, look on the on the morgue list and see <sighs> that the morgue list is huge in the summertime. So does warmth have to do with it or... Is it that a murder gonna murder regardless of what, how warm it is? Oh, it's cool time and opportunity. There, there it is. Let's see. If you look at the data from the morgue, mm -hmm. you have to include all of the reasons why those bodies are there: mm -hmm, mm -hmm. heat exhaustion, mm -hmm. uh, overexpo, uh, under, uh, dehydration, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. murder, yeah, car accidents, sure, sure. all these things that, that heighten. Yeah. Not also because more people are out mm -hmm. in 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 good or fair weather, and that could be it too. Uh, so then you probably would have to look at the police uh, blog or the police uh, records to see why a person died. And then again, you have to understand why did he write? They can uh -huh. write what they want on that piece yeah, of paper. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, and so all of this could be could be debated and need to be studied and then studied again. Yep. I still say that racism is mental illness. I, I have no choice but to agree with you. Yeah, it is mental illness. Uh, or like, you make me sick because mm -hmm. you teach it to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And and I, I believe I truly believe that uh, we are um, we're, we're raised a certain way, so it becomes it's we, perpetuated. It is perpetuated, and because I is, definitely uh, tell my my children, be careful, mm -hmm. don't drive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's because of my experiences. Sure, yeah, it's even, brainwashed. Even though my daughter's is. dead set on marrying a white guy. Really? Yep. Okay. My my who was it? My son was. It? I think it was my son. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, he lived in South Dakota with me, so that, that's all that was around us. Hmm. You know, he was dating. He was dating white. And I'm like, well, I can't make you date what's not here. <laughs> <laughs> you just went up back there a couple of months. Like, you just know, you stay single. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Dad, then, we're the only black family here. <laughs> right. What am I going to do? I'm going to make you a black girl. <laughs> Let me create you a black yeah, girl. Come on, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a mannequin. Right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> Meet Frank and Stanita. Frank, Frank and Stanita. <laughs> Frank and me. <laughs> You're dumb. Yeah. Uh, you ain't done yet. Put it back in the oven. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But when, living down there really helped me. I realized, man, these people are okay. I'm talking about the Caucasian. They were all right with me. And then, then I was more open to him dating them. Yeah, I have two or three white friends. <laughs> you see know what I'm saying? <laughs> <And> two or three. <laughs> you know? And then I had to say, Walter, why why you feel this way? You really, uh, you're not a racist. You all aboard. You cross the board. Then I realized, I come up in a family where my father was the dominant one, mm-hmm. and he come under under he was oh raised under God. racial tension. Yes, he come up under Jim Crow. Yes, okay, he come from Jackson, Mississippi. Oh my God, he's seen he's seen the South racist racism, and he's seen Midwest racism. He drove the CTA bus. He saw that. Ooh. So, okay, so he had to go through all that stuff. And so, of course, you're going to raise your children. Based on how you've been based living. Because you living. want to protect them. Absolutely. Because sure mm-hmm. you also see the consequences of those mm-hmm. that are either are uninformed yeah. or choose not to comply. Right. Right. Exactly. So I said, Walter, well, this ain't your fault that you prefer your children to marry blacks. It's not your fault. Get to know these people. And I got to know them. I'm like, oh, wow, maybe I should get me one. Uh, let's go to F. Uh, racism on Oprah. <laughs> racism on Oprah. Let's see what they got to say. <laughs> Brown eyed people are the ones who originated or who founded every major religion on this earth. No white people have ever founded a major religion. Now you need to realize the contributions that have been made to society, to civilization by brown-eyed people, by people of color. I'm talking about people of color here, folks. And most of us are not aware of those things because we live in a racist society and because we are educated by a racist school system that only teaches us about white contributions. And that's a fact. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. If we would start telling the truth in schools, we would not have racism. We could cure racism in this country. Somebody said, I heard somebody... somebody in the green room say that racism is inbred. No, it is not. Racism is not part of the human condition. Racism is a learned response. You have to be taught to be a racist. You are not born racist. You are born into a racist society. And like anything else, if you can learn it, you can unlearn it. But people like this choose not to unlearn it because they're afraid they will lose power if they share it with other people. We are afraid of sharing power. That's what it's all about. That's the reason men won't share power with women, because they are afraid they will lose power. People, if we would share power, we would empower many people so that we would all be more powerful. What we're dealing here with is mental illness. Racism is mental illness. Racism was defined by the Joint Council on Mental, President's Joint Council on Mental Health in Children in 1959 as being the number one mental health problem among children in the United States. And they didn't say among black children, they said among children. If you judge other people by the color of their skin, by the amount of a chemical in their skin, you have a mental problem. You are not dealing well with reality. Not you're not dealing well with reality. Mm. <clears throat> you crazy. Wow. Yeah. And uh, you need healing. Medicine ain't going to do it, though. Because mm. that's, I, you know, that just that just dropped in my spirit. No, that's a healing. You, that's a sickness that uh, there's no pill or drug that can rem- remediate. That's that. where I'm going. You cannot. It takes relationship and experience. Yep. And you cannot medicate that kind of mental illness. Can't do it. It's going to take God to get that out of you. Man looks in the outward appearance. Guess what God looks? The heart. Mm-hmm. And I, I hear Joe Hill saying that the racism is about the heart, not about the color. Yes. Yeah. Is he right? I agree. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Because everything starts with the heart, really. Oh, yeah, that's the core. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. As a man Think thinks, it, so mm-hmm. is he. And, and out of the heart. abundance of the heart. Yeah, the, the mouth, mouth speaks. speaks. Absolutely, yeah. So that's the... that's the A good way to also foundation. see it mm-hmm. from inside out is through the medium of music. Yeah. Because you could hear Jimi Hendrix. Mm-hmm. He was more popular playing a music that was not associated with his ethnicity. That is so true. But he was celebrated because of the genre by the people who dominantly listen to that genre. Ain't that something? Uh, Prince, they love him mm-hmm. because when he plays that guitar, he sounds like what they like to hear. Mm-hmm. They don't even see race anymore. Wow. I mean, you think of, uh, when we think of Stevie Ray Vaughan, blues. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's a you know perfect what I'm saying? example. So if it crosses over, uh, or Eric Clapton, yeah. it crosses over either way. Billy Preston, they loved him. The Fifth Beatle, they did. Yeah, you know, um, I'm just using music as as an example of how they could forget about it. Yeah. Uh, 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 what's the boy um, Johnny B. Good? He was yeah. Chuck Berry. They didn't even know he was black that's true. That's true. <laughs> until he arrived at venues. You're right because of, of sound. Yeah. And genre, Dari- and Darius Rucker mm-hmm. tearing down barriers even still to this day because the music. So, and the music comes from within; right. it has nothing to do with surface. Right. Uh, I mean, we loved us some. Uh, 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 oh my God, kind of blue. Uh, what you won't do for love? Uh, you won't do. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, some of us didn't even know he was a white guy. That is so true. I can't think of his name right now. Uh, or Hall and Oates. Right. We didn't know they were white. Uh, 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 cherry, uh, wild, wild cherry. We didn't know they Ooh, were white, yeah. you know. Especially with the song, play that funky music. You know, oh it's like, goodness. you know. So it, it's internal, and we look at the surface, huh? Bobby Caldwell, thank you, Bobby Caldwell. I should know. I got all his records in my CD. <laughs> right, that's oxymoron. All right, all um, the records in my CD. Yeah, <laughs> I got all his cassettes in my eight track. Yeah, 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 yeah. My real, real. So. When, we, when it's strictly what we when we see it, in fact, one of the major defenses that Cochran used for OJ was when the guy said it sounded like a black guy on the phone. He says, "What does that sound like?" Mm. Mm. Tell me what a black guy sounds like on mm. the phone, mm. and he couldn't articulate it into words. Mm. That's good. Yeah, good stuff. Look at Andre Crouch. Okay. Oh my God! Yes, I didn't. Right. I, I waited to go into gospel because yeah. God has crossed. We have crossed. Yeah. Also. He told the story where he came on stage, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he said the 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 entire front row got up and walked out on mm, him. Mm, mm. the the audience was literally white, and they said he the one that sang that song. Yeah, oh, we out. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that amazing? And yes. that's why they had what was called race records back then. Yes, so they know. know. Yeah, and the 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 album cover had white people on it. Motown used white faces on their covers. You had to get it out there at the time. You yeah. had to get it out there. It yeah. would be some white couple on the beach. Yeah, you never showed the beach first beach album. You never showed the artist's mm-hmm. face. Mm-hmm. No, it was abstract stuff uh, because you weren't allowed to have that in some of the white Andre Crouch's too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. And that's that was the original name before it became R&B. It was Ray's Records. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, y'all, you know, y'all tune in this show. Y'all get some history. Oh, yeah. We nerds. Yeah. You the biggest nerd, though. Um, I'm the coolest too. You the coolest. <laughs> okay. So is God colorblind? Yeah, you the one wearing corduroy. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hang around white folk and they got cold blood. Ooh, that see that is a stereotype. That is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, I, that, I got some people listening to me right now who are in their office because they work around a lot of white people and they have Eskimo coats on in the summertime because those offices are twenty below. They keep, they blast that air. Oh, yeah. They have a skin, they have a, a high tolerance, tolerance. Yeah. For cold. That is that can. scientifically proven? I think it is. <laughs> See, you think it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, where's I, the fact? I have, a, I have a right to believe. Well, I, I, <laughs> I work with them. <laughs> and they're like, man, it feels good in here. And I'm like, arr, arr, yeah, it sure do. <sighs> you just hot nature. Mm-mm. A black folk, that's why, again. Man, I love it freezing. See, I. Fat people like it when it's like that. <laughs> now that's another stereotype. It sure is. Because <laughs> I, mean, I eat fat. I'm, <laughs> I'm thick. 
Boy, I'm going to get crucified this yes, week. You are. Yes, you are. I, I, I tell them I'm going to I all my big people. Meet them outside. <laughs> I will get crucified. And, and don't be fooled. Just because we fat don't mean we can't chase your skin. It's hell either. Because <laughs> someone's going to run. I know. I seen you. I seen you. I seen you. Uh, sometimes we like to see ourselves as colorblind citizens in a post-racial society. But does that attitude confirm with God's heart? Is God colorblind? God rejoices in colorful creation. And wraps himself in rainbow of colors. You know, I would have, should have played. What that? Hey, Brittany. Somewhere over the rainbow? Can you find the rainbow connection? Sure, I'll look for it. Yeah, okay, now don't you gays get excited. We're not going in that vein. <sighs> oh. Okay. <laughs> this is Kermit the Frog. <laughs> Play that while I, while, I, while I read. I need some mood music. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, the rainbow connection. Yeah, that's a great song. I heard it when I was. The young boy, I think it came out in 1980, 80. Hey, hot off the process. Hey. Right. <laughs> Roddy Roddy Piper just died. Kermit. Yeah. I can't even, I can't even do Kermit. Kermit? Yeah. Hi, Kermit, Kermit the Frog here. There it is. Mm-hmm. Hey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Piggy. I know some people who sing just like that in church. Oh, yeah. Keep staying. Keep staying. Keep staying. Keep staying. Keep staying. Keep Maybe your mother slapped your Maybe father. Maybe your mother slapped your father. That's exactly <laughs> where I get it from. Your father slapped your mother. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. God rejoices in colorful creation and wraps himself in rainbows of color. Mm-hmm. Not only is God not literally colorblind, neither does God blind himself to the cultures of, and nations of the people that worship him. God created a world that would be inhabited by many races of people. Color is God's good intention. So in John's vision of heaven, he notices that there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. From every nation, tribe, people, and language. Standing before the throne and before the, before the Lamb. Revelation 7 and 9. One of my favorites. Y'all can go there. Do it after the show. How would John have known... This, if they had lost their cultural identities upon entering heaven. There's going to be so many races of people up in heaven. This is going to be crazy. Who, Jose is going to be standing right next to me. And um, uh, Giuseppe. Yeah, Giuseppe is going to be on my left. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, 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 my, and my front going to be Khan. He's going to be on the drums. <laughs> Ab- Ab- Abdullah going to be behind me. Yeah, he's going to be playing the flute. The flute. Oh, Absolutely. Uh, and and, uh, and symbols, yeah, yeah, and Mr. Uh, Zildjian himself, and, 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 and food as in Kung Fu, he's gonna be upstairs <laughs> playing the, 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 yeah, that mandolin. Uh huh. John could have simply written about the unity of people praising God, but our cultural identities are important, even in heaven. And John affirms this with his words Would we really want to live in a world where we were all the same? Not me. Matter of fact, I'm getting tired of you black folks. <laughs> Sometimes I go up to the white neighborhood just to shop. I want to see some other races. I really do. Why shouldn't our racial identities be affirmed as part of what shapes us and how we relate to God? A diversity of cultures is essential to the body of Christ. We are not supposed to be colorblind. Now, I'm a little blind because I got contacts in and it's going crazy right now. Cataract. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a flaw. If we pretend as if we are all the same, then we miss the richness that God gives us. God has designed the church to be the body that is unified, but that has the unique parts that need each other. We are not all eyes or feet, for just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ we, through many form, one body, and each member belong to all the others. Romans 12 and 4. And the beautiful. God is not going to blind. No, he can see the air well. Mm-hmm. In fact, why did he use the rainbow as a sign of his coming? He was color blind. Yeah, exactly. Because color shows a inclusion. Mm-hmm. And I ain't talking about the ministry no. of inclusion. No, no. But it shows an inclusion of all. That's right. It shows a, it's a symbol of, they are emblematic of Diversity and unity because yes. all colors can be made from the two shades of black and mm-hmm, white. Mm-hmm. That is so true. And he gave us the rainbow to say, I ain't flooding this earth no more. Not gonna do it. 
I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to heat it up. I'm going to put it on the frying pan next time. No, no more boiled chicken. <laughs> you can barbecue next. Absolutely. And this is why those other people took the rainbow and made it theirs because Satan does that a lot. Whatever God creates, he turns it into something of his. That's another show. It's 5.30 in the p.m. Chicago. I need to hear from a Stevie Wonder guy. Love's in need of love today. Oh, MG, somebody need to define love. Let's define love when we come back from the break, okay? Okay. Because y'all driving me cray. 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 So I'm the Jones Show. I tried to get away, but I couldn't get far because a man with the touch of repossessed my car. Don't push me because I... Good morning, or evening, friends. Here's your friendly announcer. I have serious news to pass on to. mean the world's disaster could change your joy and laughter to tears and pain it's that love in need of love today don't delay send your Love the need of love today, Stevie Wonder. He said, I wrote this song, basic uh, idea in the late 1974 in my hotel room. It, it was late, that is, <laughs> in 1974, 74. New York, New York, New York. When Yolanda Simmons was pregnant with our daughter, Aisha. Da da, Aisha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember it was so cold outside that day. The concept I had in mind was that for love to be effective, it has to be fair. 
Love by itself is hollow. I recorded the song's demo in my hotel room on a Fender Rose using a portable Nakamichi cassette recorder. Uh, wow, Nakamichi. Nakamichi, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, don't be hocking on my Senor. room. Senor. <laughs> I used to take that recorder with me everywhere, he said, like a notebook. Yeah, Love's a Need a Love Day. Great song. Uh, great memories of Stevie Wonder. And I'm telling you, I can't wait to do the Stevie Wonder sound. Oh, my uh, God. Man, on this show. It's going to take, take me. Two or three weeks. Two, man. Man. <laughs> Paul Rogers said, that's his jam. Songs in the Key of Life. I remember the cassette. There was two two cassettes. They had to use two cassettes. I'm surprised they didn't use three because <laughs> there was a lot of songs. Uh, but, I, man, I, again, I can't wait to do the project because uh, there's a, his project was called uh, The Secret Life of Plants. Oh. And uh, it is one that uh, y'all might have heard two songs over that whole project. I think one was send one your love. Oh yeah, with a thousand roses. Da, 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 oh yeah, da, 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 da. and ribbon in the skies on that same album. Mm, no, it's not. Mm-mm. Oh, I thought they were on the same. Not album. on um, Secret Life of Plant. Wow. Mm. So what I love. Da, da, mm. da, 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 mm. I think that was sounds good. Yeah. Mm. I got found out. Okay, I got to go mm. look mm. now. I got mm. confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Uh, so yeah, 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 yeah. That's where we're going with this, the whole color scheme of things. Uh, we, man, Monday through Friday, we took y'all around the block and back again. Uh, and I'm hoping that you learn something from our just radicalness. Uh, and some people, I think it depends on where you are. I'm looking at, and I, and I'm going, I'm trying to prepare a show maybe next week. I'm waiting for after the Republican, first Republican debate, which is coming up soon. All right, there's ten of those guys. Uh, they're gonna sit there and talk to each other on stage. Now, the one who everybody will pay attention to, of course, is uh, uh, <laughs> tricky, yeah. tricky Trump. Yeah. Okay. They're gonna pay attention to him only, uh, and it's amazing that a guy like that is at the top of the polls. Uh, but it's not. It's not so surprising to me because we did the show yesterday. You gotta hear yesterday's show because we really went um, uh, psychological yesterday because we were trying to show you how. Weak and and silly sheep are, right? And how once someone from the outside come in and use the right words, they'll we're, follow. We're following them, mm-hmm. and that's what happened to the evangelicals. But they have to know how to sound. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, the Bible says, "My sheep know yeah. my voice." My voice, so they can say the word. Mm-hmm. But if it's not the right sound, mm-hmm. it's timbre. Yeah, you know that with with your, with with, uh, with Iris. That's true. I can tell Iris to sit and she just looks. So you can tell her to sit. Yeah, she'll sit down. So, but yeah, you're still right. Mm-hmm. It has mm-hmm. to sound a certain way. Uh, and I keep bringing up South Dakota. You know, if, if, if I went to the war, guess what I'd be doing on this show? Giving war stories. Okay. So, and you're a teacher. You mm-hmm. talk about your kids all the time. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, I live in South Dakota where there's wild buffalo. All right. Everywhere. Okay. All right. They just released, they just introduced Illinois to some buffalo just last week. All right, because they've been gone for many, many years. Yes. That off. So they released some in, in, in wilderness areas here? In the, yeah, uh huh. Yeah, they're a whole family. Uh, oh. They reintroduced them. Yeah, with they're trying to bring, because they used to run wild here. Yeah. Okay. Well, buffalo are very dangerous. Yeah, they strong. They'll, they'll, they'll kill you. Yeah. Okay, you don't go up there and pet them. Don't touch no. them. No, no. I didn't know that. <laughs> you think about that? Man, I was, so they, no, I was riding with a white guy. And he uh, sent you off. And, it, <laughs> and uh, he drove his truck up. To the buffalo. And you reached out the window? And I got out of the car, out of the truck. He says, Walter Jones? I said, yes. Got back in his car? He says, shall we pray? <laughs> <laughs> I said, why? That buffalo is not a dog. All right. He will he will rip you to shreds. I'm like, no, let me. And that buffalo began to walk close to me. And I saw how, then you realize how big he the is. Mass, yeah. The mass. The mass. I said, you know what? You, you might be right. Let me get back in the car. <laughs> yeah, because they are huge. They're huge, okay? And, they, and I saw one from a bus on a tour. Yeah. And I was like, Whew. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then he showed me a YouTube video of a man being tossed in the air like a doll by one. I said, yeah, I'll never get that close. So one of the ranchers belonged to my church, all right? Mm-hmm. I was being ordained this year, 2009, and my family, my dad, mom, brothers, sisters, they came down. And the ranchers said, hey, come to the ranch and let me show you all my ranch. We went down there, and he showed me many, many, many acres of land. We got on the back of his truck, and he took us out to where the buffalo roam. All right? I'm not getting ready to sing. <laughs> okay? Where the deer and the antelope play. And that's all we see out there, because I, I, went, I went antelope hunting and deer hunting, and it was an amazing sport, by the way. Okay. 
I didn't kill Cecil the Lion. It wasn't me. Uh, and so we went out there, and we and he we stopped in the middle of that territory. Okay, that that field, buffaloes was several several feet away from us. Okay, mm-hmm. and he says, "Okay, don't." It was this. We were on the back of the bed of the truck. He says, "Down, don't nobody move." He says, and he got out of his truck, and they eat these pellets. Okay, mm-hmm. and he put, he walked in the middle of the field, and he said, Ugh! and they all. Heard his voice. Yep. And they come around it. Because they knew he was going to feed him. Uh-huh. They come around it. And then as they got close to the truck, we all freaking out. Okay. My mom, dad, everybody freaking out. <laughs> and then he said, ah! and they stopped <laughs> right there in the tracks. Just stopped. And I, I said, look at this. Now I'm a preacher. You know, I'm getting messages out of it. Yeah. I said, look at this. And uh, he started feeding them. And then I said, hey, they ain't move. <laughs> See, Mm-mm. my sheep know. They, they ain't move. And uh, and I said, let me feed them. He said, no, nope, you can't feed them. They ain't gonna take it. I said, look at this. Mm, mm. They won't. They will not eat from your hand. They'll eat from mine, though. That's what he said. I said, look at this. Mm. And this is, and that's my dog Iris. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this is us, as it opposed to the the voice of the evil one. Same way. He tries to disguise himself. Yes. Okay. But the real sheep no knows voice. that that's. That's Satan's voice. I ain't, I ain't moving. Hmm. That don't sound right. That don't sound right. That ain't what my master said. Mm-mm, mm-mm. That, that my master ain't going to tell him to do that. No, no. No. So how important it is to have the discernment of spirit. It's vital. It's it? vital. Most yeah. vital. Yeah. And it, that comes from relationship. It is. Not just imparting information, but mm-hmm. actually knowing him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Actually know him. Uh, and so the evangelicals heard Ronald Reagan's voice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but they didn't know him. They knew the letter. <laughs> they, they, exactly. But they didn't know him spirit. Yep, yep. And he they sound, didn't discern nothing. They, was empty. they had nothing to work with. He sounded just like them. And he was preaching to them. Yes, I was preaching right to them. Uh-huh, mm-hmm. Saying the things that they needed to hear <laughs> so that we could. Me and Bo, uh, God, Bonzo. Bonzo. Me and Bonzo. <laughs> yeah, because I made monkeys out of them. Good too. night, Bonzo. <laughs> yeah, and they, they, they went over to his side and he wound up making Using them. them. Yep, he used them. And then you thought, okay, and Far- Farwell, y'all go to the show yesterday. He said, yep. I'm done. I'm yep. not going into politics no more. I'm not going to ever back hmm. another Does politics. that sound familiar? Yeah. Well, mm, mm. Well, Rounder. Yep. 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 Governor Rounder, mm-hmm. right here in Chicago. He knew he had to get to church to get elected. And he talked our language, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. He got some of our, our prominent leaders here. Key preachers on each side of town. Yep. He got them. Yep. They, they, they are strategically placed. Made a promise. Made them a promise. He even set up some uh, some sympathy gaining uh, events. Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. Yep, and here, here they are. So yep. when when he speaks, they have to adhere. Listen, okay, because again, you you promise me one thing, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't do it right now. We don't. We don't wait wait till after we get up. No, ain't <laughs> you gotta get a corner like I do. <laughs> wait till we wait till we get up there. Okay, uh, and so. Um, that that is the now I, there was an article that I wanted to read two days ago I couldn't get to it yesterday I couldn't get to it and it was about slavery how does slavery benefit white people today <sighs> I'm gonna have to do a part three four five nine and six because I don't know what part we on today hmm. uh, but the legacy of slavery has benefited every white person in the country d- directly and personally they're saying uh, in a very gross analogy if you run a series of foot uh, a, if you run a series of foot races over 300 years but prevent 13% of the participants from learning how to run for 180 years and then give them concrete sneakers mm-hmm. for another 80 years but allow them full access f- for 40 years, it will take the 13% quite a few races to be competitive because the other 87% advanced their skills by practice and repetition. Mm-hmm. And you have to rewind it to understand what I just read. It makes sense in my mind, but it's hard mm. for me to explain to y'all right now with the mm. time I have. Life is not a foot race, but it is a fact that the average white person would not economically benefit from switching places with an average black person. Black households average one-tenth the household wealth of white households. If you believe all people are created equal, there has to be reason for this and there is it's called racism hmm. uh, the first slaves were brought 
to this country in the 1600s. After slavery ended in 1865, the Emancipation Proclamation did not free slaves in the North, by the way. Uh, and until the 1960s, African Americans lived under laws that overtly discriminated against them. In 1960, most African Americans could not vote and had uh, uh, practically no access to higher education. Hmm. Although the Civil Rights and Voting Rights Act, 1964 and 1965 respectfully, uh, addressed the legal issues and legislation like the CRA, open banking to red line areas, programs to eliminate disparities have proved to not be adequate. Before somebody emails me, you know, <clears throat> with the old carnage of nobody in my family ever owned a slave. <laughs> yeah, I hear that a lot. Yes. Uh, I like to retire that excuse with a personal example. Generations ago, my ancestors flared the horrible conditions in their home countries to establish families in the United States. It was never much a question as to whether or not we could pick wherever we wanted to live, have access to college, or to get a mortgage. If my family suffered under generations of knowing that those doors were closed, it would take generations more to overcome that lack of family know-how. In essence, my family zipped right past people whose families were here long before mine. I never even questioned that Rutgers would be open to accepting my application. <laughs> that the Navy would send me to flight school or that McGraw-Hill or Time Warner would hire me and that when I was there, I would be in a vast majority and there were less than 3% people of color in both publications I worked for. I never uh, doubted my ability to start a company and had plenty of friends to mentor me along the way. If you go back to people being created equally, it is just math that a percentage of our country's greatest minds were eliminated from the competition simply by fact of their color skin. And by extension, their families were denied the head start of their accomplishments. Every white person benefits from this, even people who arrived to the United States yesterday. Yep. Unfortunately, this has hurt our country dramatically. If you, if you caught black households up to a white uh, household wealth, it would be the equivalent in injecting the entire GDP of Japan into our economy. Wow. Who would benefit? Mostly white people. Yes. As the majority would manufacture the goods and, and services purchased with the new wealth. The good news is that many white people, remembered and unremembered, have done their duty and fought for freedom. White guys can take pride in fellow white guys like Washington, Franklin, Garrison, Lincoln, and Lyndon B. <laughs> our country may be imperfect, but our human rights are still the guiding beacon of opportunity for most of the rest of the planet. Hmm. Great article, by the way. Yes, it is. And it means a lot. Uh, it says a lot. Um, but there is a um, there is a legacy that whites have ha have on on uh, on America, and there's a legacy that blacks have ha have on America, because without slavery, uh, there's a lot of things we would not have. You see all those government buildings in Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. We laid those bricks. Yes, we did some of the artisan. Yes, sure did. Yes, and we laid the foundation and opened up the way. <laughs> we really did. Washington D.C. is the capital today because of slavery. Because what they were trying to do was they were trying to please the slave owners, and so they made Washington, D.C. the capital. Mm. A lot of you don't know that. Uh, so there wouldn't be a United States as we know it today if it had not been for the slave uh, trade. Uh, so this thing here, I, I, I won't have time to go into it, but uh, I'll read just a little bit. Legacy of slavery still fuels anti-black attitude in the Deep South. Mm. Although slavery was abolished 150 years ago, it politically, its political legacy is alive and well, according to researchers who performed a new county-by-county county analysis of census data and opinions polls of more than 39,000 Southern whites. Mm -hmm. The team of political, uh, political scientists found that white Southerners who live today in the Cotton Belt, where slavery and the plantation economy dominated, are much more likely to express more negative attitudes towards blacks than their fellow Southerners who live in nearby areas that had few slaves. Mm -hmm. uh, residents of these former slave strongholds are also more likely to identify as Republican 
and to express opposition to race-related policies such as affirmative action. Mm. This is why when you turn on the news and you see a Republican convention, yes, <laughs> you count the blacks. You can. If you can. Okay, and you can see them because you usually can see pepper among salt. All right? And you see them. You count one, two, three. All right? You wonder how that happened. How was that possible? Well, if you go to yesterday's show, you'll see where the evangelicals put all of their resources into one political party. Yep. And it let them down. And it emasculated them. It and did. now we're villainized before because mm-hmm. of it. Absolutely. For the same reason why black people put all of their efforts into one political party. Then another. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And Malcolm X said it best. Mm-hmm. Left wing. Yep. Right wing. Right wing. Same bird. Same bird. <laughs> Two wings. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh, so um, there are polar opposites uh, and there's problems on both sides. Uh, and so it doesn't matter who's running for president on either side. It doesn't matter his value. It doesn't matter. Mm. Even if it's, if it's immoral values, it doesn't matter. You're a part of that party. You have to be a part of the party. And you vote the party line. You vote the party line. Unless lines. you have people who, what they say, split your ticket and you're mm-hmm. moderates. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yes. And then how moderate are martyrs? How moderate mm-hmm. are you? Absolutely. So when you have somebody like Donald Trump who say <sighs> that the people who come across the borders are murderers his polls went up because what he said represented the majority of this demographic come on that's because exactly. we have to look at the fact that mm-hmm. they are the majority mm-hmm. as far as our residents are mm-hmm. concerned mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but these are the same majority that pushed or uh, followed behind well, of course we're talking about republican majority though sure. so i have to be honest absolutely look at that yeah absolutely so they've always been saying we need border control Yes. You see what I'm saying? So if any of those politicians on that end says, close that border, put a put a bomb over there, and if anybody cross over, explode them, whoever would have said that, the polls would have went up right. over there. All right? right. Didn't matter. But notice, you don't, you don't fight your own people because when he did say that John uh, uh, McCain – Uh-huh. Was not a hero. Oh, then yeah. his party kind of turned on him. Yeah, okay. because you don't talk about soldiers you and don't, veterans. You don't. You don't. Do and he it. came back and apologized, but it didn't impact him. That and much. it was a weak apology at that. Okay, so the European says we were, we approve of slavery, but we will not enslave each other. Right. The European says they had a pact. Mm-mm, we don't. White folk don't enslave each other. We just because they do came it. from it as serfs. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know they were served they, in Europe. They were the serfs were slaves. Exactly. You but know they just the couldn't. serfs and lords. So it's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, we out. That's why we came that's over we, here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 So when when stupidity is shown, stupidity is shown. Pretty much, you know how scripture alludes to out of the mouth of a fool. Yes. You know, comes much foolishness. Mm-hmm. And you know, a fool, you let him keep talking. Yeah. He'll okay. tell you. He'll tell you how much of a fool he is. Don't argue with one. Cause the, then, the, yeah, yeah. Don't do it. They may not know the difference. They know. <laughs> no, they won't. All right. So I turn on the TV and I see this man say the most incendiary or whatever that word is. Okay, asinine, racist things because he's not do uh, done. He's just beginning. Yes. All right. He's just beginning because he gonna he gonna drop the nigger word. <sighs> it's coming. Uh, okay, I'm telling y'all, it's coming. And his poll is going to go up even higher. You know why? Because he's representing. And he's bold enough to speak He's the bold sentence. and stupid enough to say it. So he has. I think what's happening is it's about class. Okay. When I say class, I mean middle class, yeah. rich. Classism poor. or caste system. Okay. Yes. The classism, people think that because a person makes a lot of money that they're, they're smart. That is not true. No. Absolutely not. No. They're resourceful or they're just blessed with opportunity. You see what I'm saying? Because look at him. He's a billionaire, but he's the dumbest one world right now. I think also <laughs> acting dumb is a facade that it worked mm-hmm. for George Bush, George mm-hmm. W. Bush. Mm-hmm. So he thinks it worked for him because yeah. they ain't that dumb. No, no. But he's the dumbest one running. Did you notice I said it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. He's the dumbest one running, and he'll say whatever because he know he got a backing. All right? 
Uh, and I, I don't hate the man. I just hate the stupidity. Well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I might have benefited from that. That's that. smart to hate stupidity. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's benefiting as far as his run yeah. for office. Okay. That's why he's using a tool. He says, mm-hmm. this is what worked for him. I'm mm-hmm. going to see if it works for me. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And Intelligence, you're fired. Yeah, there you go. And it's cunning. Uh, and this is the same cunningness that the devil uses. Yeah. Because when you look back at Richard Flake, you say, how dumb was I to listen to him to do that? I was, must have been stupid. I must have been out of my mind. I must have been out of my mind. Absolutely. But but Satan is just as dumb uh, because he he know he that his, his, yep, he know he loses. But he, he's going to keep. And I, and I guess you can say and that uh, anyone who, of us who are against something, we know that the end is, is not going to be favored, but we're going to keep trying to stay alive. Mm-hmm. That's what Satan doing. He's just holding on by He's holding down. on by Yep, that's all he doing. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to do a political show where we talk about. I believe in my heart of hearts that this next election, 2016, is gonna be worse than the one in 2000. I think it was with Bush and Gore. Oh my God, it's more controversial be, than yeah, that. It's gonna be worse because they're desperate. They're desperate. They never. They did not want another Democrat in the office again. No. Not three. Not mm-hmm. three in a row. It's gonna be. Des- it's gonna be so horrible. Okay, it's gonna be so crazy. And it's going to allow uh, Hillary an advantage, okay? Because you know nobody running against her really. No, you, you got one guy, but you know he he looked like he can only do one one term. I mean, I mean that's how old he is. <laughs> well, Reagan was old. Yeah, Re- Reagan. Ah, <laughs> okay, Reagan was old. Yeah. In his second term, he got all time. <laughs> well, uh, I have no account of that. Who, right. Oliver North. Uh, Oliver who? Oliver North. <laughs> right. I'm from California, the Southwest. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to play this outro here. Uh, the Great Dictator. Uh, it's the final speech uh, by Charlie Chapman. It's in that movie, The Great Dictator. Charlie oh Chapman. God. Great, Charlie great, Chapman great, 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 great soundbite. I need this whole thing to play. Uh, I don't care what time it is, Brittany. You play this whole soundbite. Ain't nobody coming on after me anyway. Man. We just gonna take over this show. 1940, uh, y'all. Man, this this is before his time. Yeah, his story. He talked about oh racism. On, oh yeah. Oh yeah. He talked about racism because mm-hmm. he was poor, mm-hmm. white English guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna play this, and uh, it's gonna it's gonna enlighten you. We've done this before. All right, y'all. Uh, don't kill me. <laughs> I'll be back Monday and talk about. Uh, bunnies and Febreze. Okay, love you. Well, so, yeah, put them Kevlar drawers on. <laughs> Sir Walter Jones Show. I'm sorry, but I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. We have developed speed, but we have shut ourselves in. Machinery that gives abundance has left us in want. Our knowledge has made us cynical, our cleverness hard and unkind. We think too much and feel too little. More than machinery, we need humanity. More than cleverness, we need kindness and gentleness. Without these qualities, life will be violent, and all will be lost. The aeroplane and the radio have brought us closer together. The very nature of these inventions cries out for the goodness in men, cries out for universal brotherhood, for the unity of us all. Even now, my voice is reaching millions throughout the world, millions of despairing men, women, and little children, victims of a system that makes men torture and imprison innocent people. To those who can hear me, I say, do not despair. The misery that is now upon us is but the passing of greed, the bitterness of men who fear the way of human progress. The hate of men will pass, and dictators die, and the power they took from the people will return to the people, and so long as men die, liberty will never perish. Soldiers, don't give yourselves to brutes, men who despise you, enslave you, who regiment your lives, tell you what to do, what to think, and what to feel, who drill you, diet you, treat you like cattle, use you as cannon fodder. 
Don't give yourselves to these unnatural men, machine men, with machine minds and machine hearts. You are not machines. You are not cattle. You are men. You have the love of humanity in your hearts. You don't hate. Only the unloved hate. The unloved and the unnatural. Soldiers, don't fight for slavery. Fight for liberty. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke, it is written, the kingdom of God is within man. Not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you. You, the people, have the power. The power to create machines. The power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful. To make this life a wonderful adventure. Then in the name of democracy, let us use that power. Let us all unite. Let us fight for a new world. A decent world that will give men a chance to work, that will give youth a future and old age a security. By the promise of these things, brutes have risen to power, but they lie, they do not fulfill that promise, they never will. Dictators free themselves, but they enslave the people. Now let us fight to fulfill that promise. Let us fight to free the world, to do away with national barriers, to do away with greed, with hate and intolerance. Let us fight for a world of reason. A world where science and progress will lead to all men's happiness. Soldiers, in the name of democracy, let us all unite! You've been listening to the Sir Walter Jones Radio Show, where he provides you with the biblical perspective for your everyday life. Stay connected to Sir Walter Jones by visiting him online at www.sirwalterjones.com or on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash AskTheElder. Stay tuned until next time with the Sir Walter Jones Show with Sir Walter Jones.